nice little upset victory of a 13 9. There, you know, I'm really this guy this because yeah, look at me. Look at me. I'm back. I'm back yeah, in a hotel guy, setup, bro. chat. I'm back in a hotel setup. Holy. No, but welcome back. Welcome back to North American Challengers, uh, chat. I am replacing Dan Dry now, and she's going to be hosting for today. As he's, you can see, I'm still in t shirt mode. I'm still like, did you, uh, did you like, mode, did you like infiltrate a color run, bro, and then realize it took exertion and you just gave up after you, 30 seconds? Like, what's I, going on? I'm not even dressed. I'm just like, I'm still in painting <laughs> shorts. Yo, and stuff get, like yo too, like. get the cannons out, bro. Get the, nice, nice knees, brother. Nice knees. Yeah, you All know right. what? Those thighs are still good. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, so let's let's just recap on that first uh, map here, guys. Uh, we got a nice little upset uh, map victory for Sad Esports over uh, MXS at 13 to 9. I, I like what I saw here from this team of Sad Esports. Uh, I, I like that we brought out like a gimmick with an ISO this time around, but a little bit different than yesterday when we had like this neon ISO come out on lotus from winthrop it feels like we had a lot more value out of Furbsa on this agent here uber uh look yes i look in general right we know what iso is kind of trying to do oh uh, i think we noticed a couple times like Furbsa being able to like just dry swing into an angle that marta was holding with an operator and and win just on virtue of double tap existing it made it look easier than you just returning to your hotel room and getting a free day rate bro it was crazy <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I had to prep. I'm prepping right now. Look at my notes, dude. But but as we continue to take notes, cake. I mean, we're looking back. We finally get to see Haven again. That's got to be a good thing uh, at the same time. So so, what's your take on now seeing Haven back with no changes? But you know, we've gone through a couple of months here since these new agents came out. The meta changed a little bit as well. But the playstyle seems to be fairly similar to how you want to work the map. Yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing this from a lot of older maps now where the big changes have to do with the meta and the team compositions overall are being brought out. Yeah, mm -hmm. there were no changes to Haven. I, you know, it would have been cool if there was, but considering how different a lot of agent compositions have been, it's super similar to Ascend, where the wilder and wackier your comp is, the more likely you are to win. <laughs> and now we can see here first kills for both of these teams between SAD and MXS. It's been quite even across the board. 11 for each. And I think it tells the story very well of how these teams were able to get a lot of successes in their first bloods, especially on these attack sides. And uh, I think different types of play styles that we saw here, where even when you're seeing Mata with an operator getting fully canceled out by, by a double tap, a uh, shield coming out here from Furbsa, it makes things a lot harder here for MXS to really get the ball rolling on their attack side. But SAD Esports seems to have a really good recipe around seeing the Skarn dashing forward to create the space and then Ferbs are just double tapping literally everybody playing aim labs grid shot and just picking off players and getting so much success here for uh, sad esports on the other end though for 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 darkest we're seeing like uh, a deadlock coming in i don't think it to my eyes that there was bringing too much value into the comp maybe there's uh, maybe there's something that i haven't seen that maybe you've seen here uh, uber well, no, I, look, again, we know that Deadlock is pretty powerful in that post-plant situation. The wall is a problem, especially on pistols, right? If you can get mm -hmm. a site cleanly, I, look, it's taking a long time to remove that wall. But what it is, in effect, forcing MXS to do, Vans, is they have to Porsche ahead of this utility. So sometimes you're seeing them go for retakes a little bit early, uh, especially mm -hmm. over on that A site. And there was a couple of occasions on C where I think Marta had to even, like, you know, updraft over the wall to try and be on the site and fight for it. Because, you know, otherwise, there's just too much time being bought for the attackers. And, and you know, they're just sort of spending their time on the outside looking in. And retaking A on this map in general is really difficult to do, let alone against, like, this util that is specifically designed to make it harder to get back in. Mm-hmm. It really makes me wonder, like, okay, now we have the ISO, we had the deadlock brought out already. We said, like, okay, maybe there's a 45% chance we'll see it this series. I'm wondering if Moist is going to try to switch it up a little bit on a map that they historically just hate playing, if we're going to mm. see an ISO from them. Yeah, and that's Sunset coming up right now. And and to talk about that a little bit, MXS, as you mentioned, your cake, they've only played it once. They lost against Turtle Troop, 10 to 13. They played a, a double initiator that was uh, engaged from the get-go by Sentinels in the past of playing like this Gecko and a KO. But a lot of teams slowly have been switched away from having a KO to bring a little bit more of a breach. While as for Sad Esports, they have been doing that with a breach and their composition, but they've been using still Dip on Silva. So I think the question now is, are, is Epic says going to try to get a little bit more gimmicky with Duelist, or are they going to try to get into something more meta in terms of Initiator? And Sad potentially could see these type of same changes where they want to develop a little bit into uh, this Breach, maybe Gecko, to, to get more favors in their side. Because remember, these are losses that I got for OT for, for Sad Esports gig. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm really curious to see if Sad's just going to continue on this mantra of being that one team that likes to experiment and really play ahead of the curve. We see a lot of teams in Challengers play pretty safe with team compositions mm -hmm. and just general structure in teams. Moist being one of those teams has been for a while now. This is their chance to mix it up. Well, we're, we're going to go right into it, man. Looks like the Ancients are already ready to go into map two, so I'm going to toss it back to you guys so we can actually see what compositions we're going to get. Thank you very much, fans. Silly, go and order yourself some room service. We go up, put your feet up, and let's... Uh... Yeah, I don't know what they got going on over there, but uh, I'm sure they've got, you know, something nice, something real sweet, you know what I'm saying? I'll order you something. I'll send it up to you, big fella. Thanks for coming Ooh. in. All right, let's have a look at these comps here. So, again, basically what we expected. So, we are going to have a, the, the same dichotomy play out where, you know, one team obviously is playing that breach comp, the, this, you know, scan initiator in the server, which is, I think, something we see less of in general, right? A lot of teams, you know, lean on that fade a little bit more for that sort of early info. And again, defensively, Moist Lake Shopify can really recycle so much of this Gecko Util to scout out any early action on A. But I want to see the fault line set plays that Sad, Sad had put together, Keg, because normally, you know, a team to justify their pick has some setups that need to be a little bit more uh, premeditated in how they make use of that initiator. You know, I'm a little sad that we're seeing such a, a, a strung together comp from Sad because they looked really good on their individual plays on Haven. They had Coburg playing by themselves, the Deadlock at Solo Hold a Sight. But Sad having to coordinate on a macro level as a team now on the attack, I, I, I'm a little nervous considering the historical results they've had so far this split. But if they can keep putting up the numbers they did on map one, I think those explosive attacks could work really well for them. All right, most next Shopify, Sad Esports. It's map number two, folks. We're heading over to Sunset in a moment. And if you caught our discussion earlier on, you would have heard, of course, yeah, us talking about MXS kind of preferring not to go to that map in general. A respectable 10 rounds against Turtle Troop at the start of this month is really all the data we have for them here in stage number two. It's an unchanged composition from this MXS team, whereas Sad are winless on this map, yes, but they've been very competitive games against Blin and YFP. So... Uh, you know, we're taking that with a pinch of salt. A little bit hard to take the average power level of these two teams onto this map here, but Marta already behind the bomb buddy wants to take control of A long and even clearing that trip. Yeah, removing that trip early on is going to be so huge. That promotes the people inside tiles, the defense, the push up through mid, and possibly go for a late crunch into this round. It's just herding sheep at this point. As long as you can get sad to go into A main, maybe not. Timing wasn't quite there. Fault line thrown out in case there'd be a refrag attempt, but Bork is playing a little bit further back. He's good for two. Maybe just take a sidebar. Good damage on the Ferb, sir. And Oshima is deep entrenched in the mid. That's an easy pick off. Now you drop the door. You've got a player advantage, and it's up to Sad to figure out how to fight their way out of this one. But the spike goes loose. Coburg, lifeless on the ground as Dip has the challenge. MXS, it's simple. Take that A-man control. Force some players down mid. Win a pistol. Really love the confident push-ups from Moist into this first round. We'd see Mata push up an A main, remove that trip early on, try to remove some life in the process. But even the giant group of Moist pushing through mid early on really goes to show that confidence has not wavered from their loss in map one. If they can continue taking this early mid control, that's going to mean sad, funneled early round, no matter what they choose to do on to their attack. They're starting off grouped up outside of A once again. They're going to look for early info on both Elbow and, of course, A-Link itself. In mid with that Cypher Cam. You spot out Flyer. That's going to be the common knife that we normally get to see, but Mata still escapes. Wingman here. Waylaying Scarred and Vol! Wow. Oh my goodness, Dip, how does he walk into that? It's just too easy. The lightly armored or unarmored squad of Sad just gets blown to smithereens there. That is a quick flawless here for MXS and Sad would sooner forget about it. Yeah, I mean, it's important to know, too, that the difference between Haven and Sunset now coming back into the pool is that we don't... Uh, we can assume that all these teams have been scrimming Haven a lot, but having these, these interesting comps that come through will be harder on a map like Sunset because it's been in play since the map came out. People have seen just about everything on this map, whereas, you know, you can still get away with a deadlock on Haven sometimes. It might still be that surprise factor. But sad sticking to a more traditional comp here will be more difficult for them on this attacking side. They'll have to find a way to get past this early util onslaught coming out from Moist. But Ferbza was detected by that knife, could be bait towards B main. No unbreakable trip on B main either, and marketplace is empty. This could be a lot of control for sad to get early sight and maybe even the spike plant down on site. But there is that mid control too that sad has to work with in case anyone tries to rotate in. And that's going to be pivotal here for MXS to apply pressure on what was almost certainly going to be a post plant on B. Darkest moves up here. You can see ahead of them went dip. 
Perps are here. Tries giving Trench Simbi. That's pretty good. And he's ready for the refrag from Flyer. However, no one expects the third. Mart able to pick up the Vandal now. Over towards mid as that is under control of MXS. And crucially, Odashima stayed out of trouble on B. I will draw it out now. Any information gained? The answer is somewhat yes. Audio heard from the left and one for the right. Still, no reason for Sad to move unless there's paint shells being thrown at them. Scar, no standing clear of those. The timing's perfect here. It's all down to Mata. Very awkward little double satchel challenge there from both races. One versus two. Mata looking for some exits now as three players look to line up for Sad. High low set up to get an easy kill confirmed. And the Bears are on the board. Yeah, losing two bodies there for Saz. The bare minimum of what you can allow to be gone in that third round. You can still buy up pretty safely into this next. Light shield, sure, of course, for at least two. But Saz taking their sweet time and having that mid control early on has proven to be beneficial. But Moist, of course, there's no shot that you get rid of mid from now on on their defense. They're gamble stacking A instead. They're allowing Odashima to play by themselves on B, really playing for that anti-push-up lurk. They're willing to give up B site and feel comfortable on the retail. Ahead. That means a lot of map control already lost for Sad. I would even say that mid. If Sad pushes up into it, it's one gigantic bait for them to collide into. This is a very scary attack for Sad. They're gonna have to fight and struggle off of this regen smoke utility to bypass all this space and make sure they can hold on to it into retakes. Okay. A camera normally placed for a solo Cypher. That might telegraph more than just the presence of Cypher himself with the Cypher sad. Here's Thrashy B. Straight over towards Skarn. Detained. Skarn's going to fold back around the corner. Lucy, but wants to take the challenge. Skarn might recover just in time. No. MXS quick enough. Now they're swarming over the B side. There is a player in mid. Ferbs who will be challenging Odashima, but gives the game away. Cyber Cage thrown out. Odashima is ready and waiting with a crosshair placed. And Brock now going to go for a defuse. Care of Wingman, we are halfway there. And it's a clean up for MXS. A three to one. Once again, stifling Sad's burgeoning economy. So such a great game plan from Moise and Sad's playing directly into it. Even if you do get that spike down on A on B and have a little bit more money to work with into the next round, there are so many protocols in place for Moise to work with. You have you have the thrash right there when the ult's available to go and take down any very aggressive players and have their teammates swing out and be bait for themselves. You have wingman there for the defuse without taking too many risks and pushing up into B main. It's almost forcing again coaxing sad to push into a site as an adjustment and you continue to see moist have that gamble stack there They're waiting for those it. early fights now last round the retake protocol at b was more simple because rash opened the way for them here maybe a little bit less to deal with to that extent Marta might be able to get the showstopper online once again oh, yeah, good point i get a kill to find that here it is it'll be all revealed laid bare for mxs now vic Uncharacteristically loses that mid matchup in mid rather, but Brawl could be able to find Ferbs who pushed up on this B side already. Rotation's coming in, the timing awkward for Mata, but he's out the course correct. Gets out with the satchel. Aftershock here to make sure he can't come in, but Odushima finds another angle of approach. Now two players in the site, back to back. Sad have to hold One their ground. Remaining. Bomb buddy sent first, and Odushima's good on the swing. That is four on the on the board rather for MXS. Yeah, and just go off of these retakes over and over. Moist, they don't have to extend a whole lot of utility to take that space back. We saw the neuro that brought out. A lot of individual plays from Sad, not working together as a group to take that Boba space back. Instead, they hold these individual angles, hope for the best that these stragglers can fall and maybe lead to an early-ish trade. But even then, it's so staggered out for this attacking team that they look so much less coordinated than they did on a team with that really relied on lack of coordination on Haven. So timeout's called. Sad at this point, they're finding themselves pigeonholed into the same strat over and over again. Keep fast pushing B, get that spike down and hope for the best. They keep challenging it, it doesn't work. They have to either default here, take those opening picks, or really play for mid and hope to take A site from the back. I mean, they're not making the incorrect choice in terms of the that, side that they the want to pressure. Part, right? Like they are going to that solo Cypher site. 
But the rotations for MXS are too clean. But that's the strat, right? That's the beauty of this strat from Moist, is that they want you to think that this B-Site is intentionally weak, so then they can just stack up and throw and dump util to clear out that minimalistic space for the retake themselves. It is, it is such a bait and switch maneuver from Moist. And in sadder falling for it, hook, line, and sinker, they have to take mid control from here and play so much less unorthodox that they want to have a standing chance in this attack. And that's been a big part of it, right? That lack of mid control for sad is what ends up unraveling them, yeah. even if it's smarter, awkwardly having the satchel out of danger in market. Odashim was able to come through from Boba and, and take a refrag opportunity. So MXS fighting for that part of the map will be crucial. How does sad look to work around it? Maybe a default here, but I think it's going to be pretty hard to pull people out of position when the Cypher's set up at B and can see it all. Yeah, and plus that early knife gives tell that there's no information outside A main. It has to be a B take, and that promotes the moist rotate so much quicker. What is this for? Trying to, I guess, scout out Boba a little bit. His attackers, and that's the showstopper that has opened the way into market here. Very quickly, though, Darkest able to step up. Why they're going to be there for the refrag? Not quite good enough for two. Numbers are even now in MXS. We'll have to re clear market, I think, if they want a decent retake attempt. I like this delay though. Not having that spike down means that Sad aren't forced to position themselves deep inside B main. They can take these fights as a group a lot easier, not have to worry about the win condition of the spike. Good diligence here, aware that there's been enough time elapsed now for a flank to come through. We're all able to get that wingman back. Dizzy also will be recovered, so some pretty some pretty impressive utility still available here, especially oh, with the paranoia smart. still up. 38 seconds left. Moist are so determined now that there are, I'm, I might be someone so deep into A site that they have to use these dizzies. The regen Uto won't be available for the retake. Stun is out, but it's too far away from anyone in Moist to hear. And that cam is gone for Rotoshima. He doesn't see it. Either, so. It makes us maybe overheat a little bit on this assumption that there's been a rotate away from Sad. A great noise cut from the attackers, if we're being fair. Odorous now is going to have to try and challenge this. It'll be one versus one. This is not going to be double held, but it's an awkward angle. Ooh. Yeah, tough to win those, Max. Now the 2v3. The side can set up here inside lobby. Off your feet! Ray rolling thunder. Isolating Gecko. Smoke's still in play, though. Right there. Zero reason to push off with that. Another fake defuse. This time Brooks out of the open. Hang on! Dip has the challenges now. There's going to be a body block from Vic as he looks to take the fight. Dip is one more opportunity. And Brock will trade it out for the win. MXS, an unlikely way to recover. In that post plant, there was a freaking rolling thunder that wasn't followed up on, to be fair. Sad looked comfortable until they weren't. That is a devastating round loss for Sad. They had that all the way through until the final moments they tripped and fell at the finish line. We did reveal something very important, though, from Moist. Here. They are not comfortable letting go of A-Site. They went for that preemptive overheating potential retake on A-Site because I, I, they must feel so much less comfortable letting go of A and going for those retakes. There's so many more places for an attacking team to hide. Now, of course, we're the all-seeing eyes. Sad will have no idea about that. Their timings were good there, but even then now, this is the round to pry open A and see what's up. <sighs> With what weaponry though? Not much. Not time to go for this kind of variation here, Marta. Yeah, sees it up there. Comfortable enough to just raw swing that. And this is the problem. When you're trying to use a, a fault line set up reactively, it is so hard to get it lined up. That opportunity goes begging. Nice shooting there from Dip. He's just been so good over the course of this series. Coming out of virtually nowhere. Having an outsized impact on Sad's chances so far. And he's given them a big one in this round. Ferbs is timing. Does have that neural theft, though. Again, look at the Fine buys. Play. Not great. Only one phantom. Perhaps he here is almost guaranteed to find a timing. Foolish. There it is. That is dirty. That is so dirty. He can't reach the neural theft. Crash exactly already way. available again, though. And that's an easy kill. Two versus two now. Mata looks the challenge. Paint shells to buy some time. This will allow Marta to pressure down Coburg. Coburg solo on the side for the time being. And that's it. There's no chance to stop Wingman. Furbs has to try and walk out. It's not planted for that position. And that'll be that. MXS get, get another one. And I am hmm, really feeling a map three. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of scrambling happening from Stad, especially once that spike goes down. It's really every man for themselves. Hopefully, though, off of that timeout, that was a moment for the team to breathe. Like they have the chance to recoup off of that probably unexpected spike plan, given that it was a thrifty round for themselves. 
Explosive round potentially on A-side here. Only a three stack on A this time, not the usual four. There is that somewhat mid lurk from Vic. He's going to keep eye on that alongside the trip wires and of course the mid presence from Odashima themselves. This three stack here needs to find maximum value. Garsack was in fault line to pave the way here into elbow. No <sighs> Doesn't even. Okay, fly off. The head butts a bullet there. Ferbs are lying in wait. Mana's going to have an awkward little double face to deal with here. And this is raw contact, nothing more. Sad push themselves into the site. Now that's awkward though. They hold their ground. It makes this here a showstopper popped in elbow and stick around. Believing it was headed towards spawn. But Vic still has to bail them out here and the Aldrone's going to see it all. TP across, that's fine. You're still going to be lit after the fact and everybody will be waiting for you as Coburg will register three for the round. It's sad. Finally find another. Look, Dip is playing mechanically wonderfully this map, but the utility is so delayed. You already had the majority of your team push into elbow blind and they lost their lives. And at the very end of the round, did we see that owl drone come out? This has been a big lack of information from Sad. They're pushing into these big chokeholds essentially blind. We need to see where this recon bow goes into the next round. Gonna be hard given that two sets of moist are in two different angles. Both sets cannot be spotted by the same use hill. It'll be a big decision maker here to see where this bolt goes. And if it spots anybody and it won't, it's directly on site. Just a sick paranoia. Such a quick adaptation there for vehicle. It's only good for a trade. That could have been awkward. Hunter's Fury means Mata has to start a step briefly. Nothing will be gained from that ultimate. Here's Brock. Must be thrown out. Flyer. No one expects that swing. But Ferbs is able to respond in time. MXS have fed themselves into the wood chipper. And now it's just Odashima in a 1v3. Moist are already good for the half already. Six and six won't be the best, but at least they won't be going into it losing. Now, yeah, timing not going to be there for Odashima at all. What an awkward little exchange. MX is wanting to push out of elbow there, thinking maybe that Sad were down on players. Awkward I mean, it indeed. Back, it goes back to the veto, right? Moist were thinking full oh, well. Yeah, look, this is the team that hasn't won a single series this split. We're going to take them to our most uncomfortable map. We hate playing this map. And they're going for these overconfident pushes. This is one of the few rounds where we've actually seen it punished for Sad's favor. And now they're going to break up a site. They're going to let go of it so much more. They're expecting a big change on Sad's end. But Sad is a team that loves to go for the same thing over and over again. We saw that way back over on Haven. The name broke, don't fix it. Scan though, yeah. changes the rollout. This time heading over towards Link direction. <laughs> Flyer. Well, credit for effort. But again, a bit of an awkward buy around here for MXS. And Scar now going to be able to cut his way through them. A bit good for one, but just the trade. Showstopper up here for Mata. And decent timing on the flank, but has to win two out, and he does now. There's an opportunity. 45 HP. Dip still healthy as they come. Oh, buddy, that is ridiculous. Mata with a showstopper ends it. Come on, man. That's so weird. Sad take yet another one here as MSX, MXS, rather, throw caution to the wind. I don't think I've ever seen a round win like that. Yeah, I'd go for a timeout too. What the heck just happened? Says Moise. And not, not big corrections need to be made for the team. Just a chance to take a breather, not overheat like they did the last two rounds. The rounds where they played somewhat slower and played for these retakes on B have been their more dominant rounds. But that plays into that fear factor that we mentioned, right? They don't want to give up A site nearly as fast as B. A site is deceptively hard to retake with how many funnels these defenders have to clear. And with the weapon weaponry they had, they weren't exactly brewing with confidence that they could That's double true. stack into elbow and have a strong position there. And they were pretty distributed across the site. And obviously, Flyer just, you know, looking for an opportunity, bursting through that smoke on link. Fair enough to throw a variation in. <laughs> oh, yeah, we don't see many rounds end like that. Marta hoping to not get traded uh, <laughs> with the showstopper. So sad able to take a, a posthumous round win. Yeah, I can't remember how many posthumous round wins I've seen like that, where there's just nothing on the battlefield. It's uh, it's a little eerie for LA, huh? Mm. But six and four now. Moist, they still have the chance to get themselves a lead going into this half. No real discernible comp advantages for one side or another going to this one. Haven, at least, there was that deadlock comp that's going to be much more difficult to work with on the defense. Both teams here, they can play for their gunfights pretty early on. Okay, fault line satchel in. That way, Scar knows that no one's going to be playing close right. That's so swung out here. This is, I mean, 
You could get out of there with a satchel, but it feels one and done to me. Vic down to four. Still good for two, because why not? And Ferbs are now essentially pinned in that corner. You may not know how low Vic is. Spike is down. Vic smokes it off. Pressure starting them out here towards elbow. And there's really not much that Ferbs can do except try and win on one of these extremities, win one of these 1v1s, but it's being doubled up on here by MXS, given how low Vic is. Spike to hand at least, Max, but don't see how you're getting out of this situation unscathed. Ferbs is the one that has to figure it out, though. 53 to play. A little bit of spam, Odorous. The fear of God in him. Neural theft would be an utter waste here. He knows. He knows exactly what he's walking into. And there it is. Stand and deliver, they say. MXS, get their seventh. Try to fake out with, this, uh, with the camera there. Unlucky, Last almost. In the half. But again, we, we saw the majority of this early game devolve into retakes against Sad on B site. Now it's been Gunfight City that, frankly, the rounds have been closer for Sad taking on these straight fights on A. But now we're going to see the return of that four stack once more. A lot of ultimates now built up for Moist. As soon as any presence is given away from the attacking team, we should see Thrash come through. No command possibly right after. Wouldn't be surprised if Vic eventually repositions themselves for the flank too. Data started to people fly out. Early Thrash off the rip here to clear elbow. That's just an answer to the fast race satchel play that we've seen Skarn go for. And Marta scaled up in the mid. Great timing there. Spike lost. Spike down, B. Oh, get him out. That's the question. Odashima says we'll take a trade for Marta. That gives us a player advantage now. Finally. For the first time in what feels like five or six rounds. Sad are looking at B. Flash is gone. Stun's gone too. Oh, oh no! no the, trip. the fly trap. Two left oh. alive now. Bare minimum information gathered now. Dip has recompo, can only use it once. Dip spotted there. Nice little shoulder peek for Odashima, and he'll wait. He'll wait for a peek from the other side of that opening. It's going to be set up to make it hard to actually double face that angle. Ah, spotted out. Okay. Well, yeah, Dip essentially out of options at that point can take solace in the fact that a uh, from the shadows was committed in order to reveal him. Now Koberg will play at the back of the site here. Neural Theft, of course, just eliminating the other possibility for MXS now as there's no point holding those ultimates. Ugly stuff. Eight rounds for MXS on defense. Got to be good to go into the second half with a bit of confidence when you're whole map down. Yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest strengths of Moist overall in their run of challengers is that they have a really good read Switching overall sides. of what their enemy team wants to accomplish at the start of a round. The fact that they read into the fact that they could give up B a lot more than A site, give up the spike plant, go for a retake with minimal utility used realistically, was so smart from Moist in the early games. Sad though, they made it competitive by taking raw gunfights on A site, not nearly as even as Moist had probably anticipated it as being. But now that the sides swap, there's going to be considerably less information for Sad to work with. Flya started each round off with that early suppressing knife to find A main control. That information was gigantic in letting the team know to go for those early rotates defensively on B site. That won't be the case anymore. More of a presence needed now on B for the defense. A side, three defenders, sure, but not nearly as many guns to take fights. Marta eating utility like it's going out of fashion there. Skarn, no choice but to hold that line. No way to get out. And MXS, simple application of flash utility gives them control of elbow here. And they know the dip is waiting on the other side. Odashima thinking about playing ahead of that intended shock dart location. But it's a simple matter to overload this position. Dip is sat in the smoke. Looking to peek out of it now behind the fault line. I like the little one two they put together, but ultimately, sheer weight of numbers for MXS makes it impossible. Spike is headed towards A still. They're about to emerge from elbow. Marta snuck onto the site and has smoked off. Ferbsa may have no choice but to Spike walk planted. on in. A lot of low HP though. And yeah, he's going to have to be literal trigun level accuracy here, but a bash the stampede in a 1v3. Also the same level of invincibility, if I'm honest with you. Yeah. All right, Camel spotted. How much to be done from here? Get in the pistol there. That is a... Twist of the knife in the back for Sad Esports with a paltry four rounds to work with. I'm going to have to wait until the other side, presumably, of that bonus to think about getting onto the board. 
Yeah, these early rounds have been a big benefit from Sad too so far this entire series. The fact that they couldn't convert this pistol means now Moist, like you mentioned, should be going 10 and 4 now. They'll be three rounds away from bringing things to where Decider to bind if they do convert this buy up. Sad may have the chance to do the funniest thing in a 4v4. Only the classics, though, in a single sheriff. Standard cam location there. Just look over towards Link briefly. Cyber Cage, here we go. Marta. Yeah, caught in the fault line here. Able to get out, though. Satchel pretty darn good. Getting himself out of a snafu. When Darkest Solo swings into that. Oh, buddy. Sad are throwing themselves at the wall to see what sticks. Unfortunately, it's just a rent trails at the moment. Ferbs are with it all to do. Again. There's no chance. No, and Ferb is so delayed again. Went for the flank last round. This time, just pure disconnected from the rest of the team, having to solo hold B. Just a read here from Mata. Oh, okay, flying. Well, Mata now you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, Flya, sure. Yeah, 10 to 4 now, though. And if, if Sad's return out of Haven to a map that's much more conventional and challengers thus far has been a standard comp and frankly, just a lot of disconnectedness between the team's communication, it, it really makes me worried for Bind because it, that's a similar fault the team has had historically on that map where they have the right ideas, but whether it be coordinating gunfights, winning those gunfights, the utility exchange and when it's brought out has been a big issue for Sad. We liked them in the post plants a lot on Haven. We did. They have not been able to get many of them on this map. And even when they have, it's been like a cypher held side that the rotations for MXS were way more well drilled than they were in Haven. This is a different arena. Make no mistake. Cypher utils, stymied for a brief moment. He knows that Sad have made significant investment into this round. It'll be MXS to play it slowly. Cover going now, Sunshine. Good smoke now. Forcing Sad if they want to take it the re-clear mid. Looking for that explosive play. One minute left now. Just Coburg on A site. Turning out the camera. Paranoid out. Execution in play. Look at this. Mata though stifled. That timing's everything. Great counter paranoia there from Coburg. Buys a lot of time. It also forces everyone to go through elbow. Fault line. No swing off that for Coburg. A little too risky, perhaps. As Mata just walks out of the open. One for one. Coburg down to 22, though. Could be a problem, but only two left now for MXS, and they are trapped inside elbow. They can get out, but they've made sound doing so. 30 seconds left. So much sound. And Ferbser is healthy enough to challenge this. It's very clear where MXS are headed here. It's got to be a cut through mid if they want to have time to plant that spike. Already watched top of mid. Sad having for Ooh, dangerous. Yep, there's Vic. Spike though was to hand for Brawk. So it will be a pure retake now as Brawk will just get it down in time. Clear the camera. Pinged out though. Unwinnable from that position. Not even Brawk to go on. Can get it done. Sad up with four at the end of the round. Keep those guns going into round 16 and get their fifth. That is a miracle round from Sad. They absolutely need to keep right every here. gun alive. Only right losing here. Skarn is the best potential option this team has had. Now, they know a site can be really well played in their favor as long as they can hold on tight and wait out utility. Moist, again, similar issue they had back on Haven. Timing, they usually have it in their favor. But if it slips away and becomes mistimed on their own end for the executes, the big chance for Sad to slide in and take a few kills. B site, though, only Ferbza was discovered last round. No unbreakable trip this time either. It'll be a great opportunity to remove B site completely start of round. And I think for Sad here, it's really a matter of having a successful B retake. That Cypher Cam placed such that, you know, there's no expectation for Ferbs that anyone would join them on the B site. Clearing some of these trip wires here. Brock spots that out, of course, and uh, Flyer revealing all this util. So great round here for an L command. In goes Thrash. Those initiator ultimates going to be used now to clear B entirely. Dark is falling there on Boba. Takes like an early swing by the looks of things. And there was trade potential based on the sad players there. But that opportunity goes begging. Kerberg also taken down. MXS look good now for this retake attempt from the defenders. And they needed to go for this clean retake too. But Mitch, there's no flashes available. There's no way of clearing out that space and not forcing Moise to push in. Oh, they've got to contact this. All right, there's Dizzy. 
Mata disrupting here with a satchel. Swings into Furbster, who is ostensibly flash, but still able to take two kills One here. Now the two versus wow. two. Furbster for three. Up to Odashima now. And he it's not planted for him at all. Challenges Furbster, but the double swing comes through as Dip gets off the defuse. What a round. What a comeback. As Sab were down to three before that hit really came in. And that was Dire Straits. Down by two bodies. No flashes available. The raw... <laughs> you would think he was still playing ISO. The raw push in from Firmza. Swinging through and taking, what, three bodies down inside B main? That's absolutely what you want for a new mainstay player for Sad side. As much as Alvin was a great sentinel, Firmza just has that extra X factor to bring themselves 20 and 2 well above anybody else in this lobby. And again, that was the question we asked at the start of that round. How good is the retake here on the Cypher site? Pretty good, as it turns out. Yeah. And bear in mind, that was an L Command thrash round for MXS to try and give them an easy in. Those options off the table for them from here on out. And that gap is closed to four. Good Hunter Spiri. Great way to style, style all the space. Odashima though removes dip. That's a huge no uh, neural theft. Gun now, Satchel's out. Gonna be good for that one. It's just Brawl. Hunter's Fury ends up being the undoing for dip there after some fantastic rounds at a great retake teamed up with Verbs. Speaking of which, they'll be receiving this hit. Brawl sees the cam, doesn't expect there to be someone on the site itself. And the Stinger doesn't get to go to work. Now it's a three round deficit. If they try yeah, big worry now for Urza. Absolute raid boss on B side, but Skarn also picked up an ult orb right at the end of that last round. One away from Showstopper. They could try to farm an early kill here. They get enough space, which just seems doubtful. They could go for A orb. But if they're able to play their cards just right, get one kill, they could easily Showstopper and get at least two more on this A push. Moist need to be cognizant that Skarn is close and they have to be careful. I think it makes sense have gotten onto the fact that there's no breach over towards A at the start of these rounds. So the odds of a fast hit being disrupted by a fault line are right not here. high. Right here. Still, they're now going to go towards tiles. And it's such a lightly held mid because we saw the drift over there from Darkers. This pans out well for MXS and that's even better. Getting a kill straight to through towards market. Cyber case to allow for the cross here. Darkers looking for a way around it, but just walks into the line already being held by Odashima. And trade for dip. Alcorn sent out. Do this all day. And Flyer, in no hurry to move from that position, receives that extremity push, and it's an open B side. It really feels like Sad's defense right now is open season. If you can find an opportunity, you take it. These calls separated out now completely. No tradeability between the last two members. Showstopper now from Scarn available. Flyer cut noise at the right time, but Dip was ready. Three for the Sova. <laughs> okay. Love that shoulder peek, really. The presence of mind to go for that here. Now the pincer starts to get put on them. Khan has a showstopper. Wow. Might have a chance to make use of it. Did might just swing this one. Brock knows he's about to get tapped from behind. Can he make it happen? No. Sad. Putting it together at the end of that round beautifully. Dip winning that fight against Flyer. Absolutely critical. And Dip has just made such an impact on Sad ever since he joined the roster. And you, you mentioned it before, this is a player that was in the depths of amateur Valor for the longest time, started winning these smaller tournaments, and now look at the reward. Yeah, you get some money there, but I mean, look, going on Sad, playing in challengers, and really doing a really good job at it too, is unbelievable. But now, Moist, they go for a timeout themselves. This is a big chance for them to turn things around. They had such a great lead, but now they're only up by two. It was close on Haven. They nearly took it back themselves, but it slipped away. And they've had the great ideas early rounds, but it's just these small rotates that are being made by themselves, shut down by the top of mid by one player or another. Just this mid rounding has been so difficult for Moyes to find that impact to get the B site. And you pointed the finger, actually. It's sad, honestly, when it came down to some of the raw gunfights, right? Those individual moments, being able to win and like establish themselves in some really important parts of this map, i.e. dip flanking through mid. They're able to make it happen here over the last couple of rounds and the difference is palpable. I will say, it's being generated by two specific individuals on this sad roster. And I don't think yeah. you need a, you don't need a rock size degree to sort of piece that together. But again, Having Ferbs out as the solo weak site holder doing so well, it basically means that A and B are both feel nigh impenetrable for the attackers. 
I mean, if you're moist now, you, you, what's the perspective, right? Is your wind condition just That's to remove cool, Firmsa yeah. and dip? Or do you want to play for the site themselves and then coax those two players that are performing unbelievably oh, to play directly nice into one. you? It's such a tough choice depending on where you're at. Good start here would, have, it would be a fast hit and take control available, I think. Sorry, stop it for Mana. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Straight dip. behind box there, making the correct uh, guess. Dip though, having to spray through there from Lincoln. Ferbsa trying to give him excess pause for thought as they scale up into elbow now. Here comes a rotation from Darkest. It's gonna be here on time. MXS have really been slowed up here by so much of this util. Cyber Cage thrown out, and that's some info gathering there for Vic as he ults into the site and sees probably a hell of a lot of resistance waiting. Oh, the stall makes me nervous now. One minute left, all that space creation, all that utility. Imada's life for what? Just a reset. They could try to rehit later. 56 seconds left though. There's not a lot of time to employ that strat. They could try to go mid once again. Always being held though. This is where Moist tend to get picked off on that entry towards marketplace to be. This time though, Darkest is in position. Odorous is holding a really safe angle in elbow, so not looking towards spawn and won't see too much. He's just hoping someone walks in to try and re-clear elbow manually. They're gonna go mid to A. It's the only left. chance they have to switch it up. There's no trips here though. Right, bad sound. Darkest! It's good for Spike two. Down, That's gotta be enough. 22 seconds left in the round. Spike recovered by Flyer, but he's about to get a heck of a lot more than he anticipated. Last and it's good for standing. two with the spray transfer. 16 seconds. 1v1. Spike so far away though for Odashima and Ferbs and those they can just play the time game. 10 seconds you left. can catch the Cypher on the cross back if you find the right timing and Ferbs does. Plays off the sound cue perfectly. Another impeccable round finish for the Cypher that's already leading the way for Sad. I love the idea of playing up into mid, take over a site. That's what I wanted to see Sad on the attack do, but no. It gets, you can see why it gets shut down so quickly. It's that one player that's playing that Sniper's Nest top of mid that's been stifling Moy so much. And they've been trying to unlock a site, but they're having so much more difficulties, even with a 3v5. B site, though. Has been easier to get onto for both these teams. Retakes for Sad have been a little bit more chaotic than when it was moist on the defense, but it's certainly winnable for their defense too. Default. Looking for that opening pick. Pressure should be against mid. A lot of players holding a very devout angle one side or another, but they're dialing themselves back. Rash instead brought out, clearing so much space. A hunter's fury to tow. So much info, so much space creation. All for what? They're going to have themselves be here. It's the weaponry right that's more of a concern for MXS now. They are really trying to dig their heels here. Actually, lay hit towards B. Trips are on that site. Marta's able to take down Koberg. That was the player over towards Market. And there was a smoke in the way. Ferbs are very quick. He wants to make his way into Market to, to recover that space. There's better weaponry here for Sad going a long way. Rolling Thunder also up. That's just a fault line though for now. Double lit. That is ridiculous. Garno wasn't hit. By that thrash at all. He's able to sit back and take the trade, or at very least a free kill. And now Flyers in a 1v3. This is getting ugly now. MX is starting to backslide. This is such a great turnaround from Sad. They're taking elements of Haven back out again. Remember, that was a team where the coordination wasn't necessarily on the big picture scale. It was playing around each other, having these individual plays, and really just capitalizing on the mistakes of Moist. 10 to 10 now. A team that I was afraid they'd be overly coordinated, over-engineer these rounds, are now not doing that anymore, and Sad are looking great again. I don't know if Sad can keep this up, Mitch, if we're going to see map three. Sad lost both pistols on this map, and have been able to come back beautifully here with six rounds in a row. Now we're even, and this is a round for MXS that they lose this, that economy is in dire straits. Again, not reinventing the wheel here once more. No early aggression towards A, and again, they will embed one or two players over towards Tiles. A lot depends on Coburg here not offering himself up for free. Both and it's a more passive gone. angle being held. Does have that paranoia to help anyone with contact. Top of stairs. Dip. Dodging, ducking, and diving as well. Right That's the course of this map. Osima reveals briefly now behind that statue. Fix up to turn it into a trade at least, but Darkest is also there. This is potentially catastrophic for the attackers. They're out on B. We have a variation in placement of those trips though. And MXS have to be careful. There's an opportunity to capitalize on it. That's why the null command was so important. Ferbson now cannot rely on those trips at all. Neural theft though does its job. 
off the side of MXS trying to play, but Ferbs deals with fire. That's one. Two more to face. You could have held on it potentially. Marta now has the opportunity to bring the KO back, and this means Scarn has to move. Ooh, that's Terry! Oh, he's done it yet again! Oh, MXS this time as attackers, though, will win that posthumous round. Oh, man. I mean, we talked about how we rarely see that at all, but now twice in one game. Unbelievable. And Moist getting their hands so dirty with these gunfights now. Bringing to this, this to be a very scrappy map has worked out beneficially for both teams. But now Moist, they're one round away from securing, at the very least, having yeah. sad face overtime. But they have to convert this next round. No, Neural Theft available, sure, but you can't fish for this opening pick. You need to wait and buy your time. Oh, that's a pretty uh, high-value recon bolt there from the defenders. Oh, man. The Rolling Thunder available for Darkest, too. If he brings that out way too right, early, here. this could be over. This is so proactive, though, for Sad, because they have such control of that B-side extremity, Max. They do. Hold this angle. Know exactly. Oh, Marta, though. Chara, he's going to punish you if you're not ready for it. Skarn just whips out the old bazooka. He says, come right on up. So the neural theft, really. We'll give some information, but doesn't allow them to play off that local scenario with the with the raids on the other side of the wall. Vic is deep up mid. Darkest was on the move there, not able to complete the kill. It's going to ward Vic away at the very least, but market is open to the attackers. It's Verbs that sat at the back of B again. Double trip set up, but nobody's walked into them just yet. There's one. 60 HP. Ferbs, that has been unbelievable for this ad roster. And they don't overheat here. They just back off happy enough with that one kill. Rolling Thunder. Odorous is sat in this corner. Ferbs, that has a feel for it. But again, who is there to play off that? There's the trade. This is going to be costly for Sab, but they want the round win. There's that Rolling Thunder you were talking about, Keg. Vitch has blank. to sit out. Vic. Fakes a TP on top of the kiosk here. And there it is. You're kidding me. Oh, no. They allow the defuse to happen. Sound key must have been obscured. That is brutal. Oh, the timing was almost there. There was so much wasted utility. I said that last round. The Rolling Thunder even was delayed. Paranoia before that. Unused necessarily, but no. 11-11 now. Whoever wins this next round guarantees overtime. Just or uh, potentially overtime. That was crazy. The defuse oh. there for sad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no way, dude. Vic, I thought Vic's timing would be a little bit faster there and get the swipe, but no. Missed timing all around. No spike picked up this time. Early flashes out, faking the push over towards A. But sad aren't falling for it. Cover They're still holding out. on to mid. They know the conditioning of this early round util usually leads to a caravan from A to mid to B. Smoke at top of mid. What is our regulation time kill record? Was it like Aspas at 36? Ferb's at 29 here. That is crazy stuff. Ooh. Okay, freebie. Spray through the smoke. Brawk just riddled with bullets. I think he was minding his own business in tiles. And in the market, go MXS at least. They've snuck through there. They've braved the firing squad for now, but it's about to be reassembled now in Boba. Half peak for dip. Doesn't commit. MXS, get out. Standing ahead. Oh, they're stuck. A minute left on the clock. Fully discover two. They might try to reset and re-hit me. Another smoke Can kill they? for Sad. Ferbs hit by the paranoia here, but no play off of that. Vic has to go slow. Flashpoint for Darkest, but again, trying to keep that spike at bay. This is ridiculous. Vic now in a one versus four. This is it. This is the money for MXS threatening to be flashed down the gurgler. 30 seconds left. And the spike is into hand. It's so far across the map. Vic doesn't even have an ultimate to recover it. This is cooked, bro. Cooked. The chefs are in the kitchen and they're looking mighty sad. This was Matt moist, Boyd. hoping, not even hoping. They felt so confident they could win out this series so cleanly off of Vito's. Get rid of Sad's best maps. Yeah, it's okay. You can put our worst one, the one we hate to play. The one, this is the second time Sunset ha has been played by Moist in all of Challengers this year. And they were willing to play into this because they knew Sad had not won a series yet so far this split. And felt so confident they could keep that streak going and bring themselves up in the group for an easy day. Sad said no. One round away from converting this series 2-0. Well. Suppression there inflicted on these two sad players pushing up. Still enough money for MXS to make a very reasonable buy, but Mana! 
Well, his chance to have an impact on the round has gone begging. No commitment here for MXS. Very much a default. And they have good mid presence. Plenty of utility to play off and a thrash. Okay. But losing their entry. That is going to hurt. Thrash is heading over towards B here. Caught in the trips. Won't see anything more. At least having a double back and be recovered. Huge. That's huge. Crossing oh, now over towards A. Dip and Burbs are still alive. They've been monstrous in getting kills. Massive hold here for Coburg. I must wait Just a later timing, I think, to start that flank. Here's the plant. Sad, not in a great position to intervene. Hunter's Fury, though, disrupts the plant entirely. Odashima taken down to lethal range. Flyer also very, very low, and there's that neural theft. Tells you everything you need to know. Coburg may not have time to wait here for Furbs to take something on his own, and then finally he's not there. Brooks able to take the swing and check it after the fact with a dizzy. I think Furbs avoids it. So might have a timing here, but it's looking worse and worse for Sad now. That overtime potential starting to rear his head. Wingman is good, but Darkest, what timing? Is it? Able to control the Vandal now in a two versus two. Darkest pushes through. Flash point got him in there. Odashima now, it's dipping a one versus one, and Sad have done it. They've shut the door on MXS. What an upset win! Clearing out Sunset and Coburg. Oh man, he's astral projecting right now, and I would be too. What a <laughs> result to get your first win of stage two. Unbelievable. I have not seen a team in Challengers make such a drastic turnaround. Wow, unbelievable. Furbza came in essentially the very last second. We thought going into this, Alvin Boy would still be playing. Has been beautiful, both mechanically and worthy of helping in the server. Dip in Furbza. Holy Mitch, unbelievable. Yeah, that is obscene, honestly. I'm curious to see what that scoreboard says for Furbza because they get 29 kills by round 23. Just an unbelievable showing from that, again, that mostly solo site holding Cypher. Such a problem for MXS to deal with over the course of the day. And all of our conversation coming into this game was that yeah. MXS just take one win and they catapult themselves back into like the top two. Now, they're two and two. Dropping a game to Sad, giving them their first win off this stage. Really throwing Group A into utter chaos. Yeah, I mean, at this point, like, there's been such an elevation of teams' performances across the board from Stage 1 into the Mid-Season Cup into Stage 2. Every single team has leveled up. But SAD was debatably that one team that we didn't really know what to expect going into this. Roster shuffles, substitute players. Who have they been scrimming with? What have they been scrimming? And now we see this utter chaos, a deadlock combo on Haven. 31. Anything's possible. Th 31. That's insane. unbelievable. Who is this Little guy? Cat. Who is this guy? numbers there, right? <laughs> Who God. is this guy? He's a guy that that has played with Dorcas and Dip before. I, I know I was listening to you guys too on, on this amazing cast of the boys, but you know, Keg was mentioning it, it for Dip, a uh, uh, all-star player that has been grinding the tier two, tier three scene, but they've been doing it point under really had a chance to really get further out, but this gives them a chance now. First, uh, now. Ooh, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Van Zussi, we got a little bit of, we got a little bit of, uh, we got a bit of roboticness from your mic there, Van, so we'll give you a chance to, to clean that up a little bit. Yeah, hotel mic, listen, we've, uh, we've put this together on pretty short notice to get Vans in here, so we'll, We'll give him just a moment to get it set up here, but I was getting the lore. Probably trying to drop lore on me. God damn, I was here for that. Maybe we'll hear that uh, later on. But here, but look at these post plant stats, right? Both these, uh, you know, both these teams are pushing into these single cipher sites. That's why the, the post plant rotations from both sides, Sad and MXS respectively, very, very good. This is a, a real map for it here. But it came down as a really down and dirty fight towards the end of the round. 15 first kills and MXS still can't convert. God damn. Yeah, I mean, look, the first Bloods had impact going into this series, but not as much monstrous impact as the late round plays. Big win comp for both teams really put a lot of emphasis on not only taking site control, getting that spike for the post plant, but also evading the post plants and making sure they could retake sites was more important than any earlier mid rounds we had seen. Yeah, a ridiculous result here. All right, what's hey. up? Oh. <laughs> That's a little sussy. Sound a little sussy still, brother.
All right, we got Vans. We got Vans struggling a little bit there, folks. Uh, sorry about that. We'll get that one sorted on the other side of the break. We'll be back, of course, to continue to wrap up this sad versus MXS result. So don't go too far. It's sad esports with their first win of stage two. They say in life, there are no guarantees. Hmm. They say a lot of stuff like that. Slow it down. Play it safe. Head your bet. Listen to that. You gonna stop? Because they can't guarantee you'll pull this off? No guarantee you'll win? No guarantee everything's gonna be fine? your own guarantees nobody else will light your way start your own fire and keep it burning and we guarantee you'll have one hell of a lifetime Welcome back, folks, to the night's North American Challengers. I'm Van Cillian, and thank you so much for your patience with the little hiccups that I've had, but I seem to be fairly good now. I'm still white as a ghost because of the lightning that I have here, but at least the audio should be fine. So without further ado, though, usually what happens here is we have a post-match interview, which we didn't get to have before that break. So I'm going to bring in Dip now. Dip, dude, congratulations. How's it Big going? W. Dude, uh, it's going hey, great. I haven't had a chance to talk to you in a very, very long time. I think since Brazil. Yeah, uh, yeah, for, yeah for Brazil. Rebel Clutch. So how, how's things been going for you, man, so far? I mean, you've been grinding. You you now made it to Sad Esports. How's the how's the grind been for Northward to now? Yeah, uh, I mean, the grind's been, it's been tough. It honestly has, as you can tell. Like, this is our first <laughs> one in Challengers. We've been struggling hev heavily, but I think, uh, you know, we've been working hard and things are finally starting to piece together. Scrims have been going way better. You know, I mean, we finally... <laughs> Finally, can pull through on the win. So uh, things things are are turning around. That's awesome to hear. Actually, there's there's two parts that I want to elaborate on on that uh, statement. Then is the first one is is this the reintroduction of Ferbs uh, into the core that you've built in the past that you've played with with him and with Darkest in the past? Has that been like the biggest addition and the biggest change that started to see immediate results now for Sad Esports? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I mean Ferbs, uh, Darkest, and I have been playing together for 
over two years now. So we have a lot of chemistry. We know how each other play. Um, I, I don't know. It, it, we, we play way well together, and it's helped a lot of things. <laughs> and, and what about Coach Joe? Because Coach Joe also joined yeah. most recently yeah, into the Sad Esports Joe. roster, right? So how, how's it been going with yeah. Coach Joe? How, how did you guys link together, and, and how did it come about? Uh, I've known Joe for a little bit now, and then um, mm. I guess Sad was ended up looking for a coach, and then eventually, you know, I guess whatever whatever roster roster drama Sad went through, and then they were looking for new players. Coach Joe introduced mm. me. Um, and yeah, I mean the Haven comp we ran today that was that was all Joe. That was his <laughs> idea, and it worked out well. So, yeah, let, let, let's talk about that because you guys looked yeah. excellent on the attack side. I mean, maybe maybe we haven't seen the true value of what Deadlock could bring into that composition, but at least this ISO and Jet combination of continuously hitting this A site on the attack seemed to be a, a very nice recipe. Yeah, I think uh, I mean Deadlock in general. He Deadlock is the is a really strong agent. His, his anchoring mm. ability is is next to none in my opinion, compared to other agents. <laughs> and uh, I think ISO is really strong as well. And I think teams are going to start to realize that. And uh, eventually, I mean, it's just so early, so you know you're not going to be able to yeah, see a yeah. whole lot of work with ISO. But I think he has a lot of potential in pro play. Uh, and, and do you think it's just like a one-off gimmicky thing? Because, uh, you know, everybody's talking about how Overtune, Neon, and, and, and ISO are right now that some some teams just want to pick them up and try it out. Or do you still see this agent being like a, a long-term fit into a new meta that we currently see now in 8.11? Uh, I, I see it both ways. I definitely think like mm -hmm. as right now, it's for sure more gimmicky because, you know, everyone's testing mm -hmm. stuff. No one really knows how to play against it yet. So it's definitely it's very gimmicky now, but I don't know. We'll have to yeah. see. We'll see if teams stick with it and, and how it turns out and like in franchising as well as challengers. Awesome. Well, you, you also sound super excited because I think you're running off a super high of this victory and this upset yeah, that you yeah. got against MXS. And I, I want to talk about that the, in that about second time. map because that second, yeah, exactly about time, that second yeah, map yeah. on Sunset, it didn't look like it was going to go to plan though because the, yeah. the amount of times that you guys just tried to hit towards this B site and then MXS seems to want to play just retake every single time has been successful for them every single time. So how did you, what, what, was, what was the communications to make sure that you're able to close out this series? Uh, well, we were struggling with B post plan a lot. Um, I think we had the site free four times, r roughly, mm -hmm. and we I think we lost every time. Our adjustment was either to just fight <laughs> up into them or or straight up just, just hit execute A as five. And I think that worked for us three, four <laughs> rounds in a row, so we just kept doing that. We just yep, adjusted yep. to what worked, so. And then you had firms that just pop off on the defensive side, so right. seeing like a different play style that you guys had versus MXS, where you guys did such a great job denying MXS site control while they were playing retake against you guys. And you saw the result in the end, you guys getting that victory uh, over MXS. One last question for you, though, Dip, before I let you go, uh, because... I, I've been following you for quite a long time as somebody that has a great mind for this game, but also somebody that likes to stick a lot to the Silva. Uh, I, I've seen you use Silva on Lotus. I've seen you now use Silva a lot here on Sunset, where you know some 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 fans and some players or people that are trying to learn a game may not understand the true value of Silva in these maps. So, how, why do you play Silva so much, and what what how, what do you see in this agent that makes him so strong? I just think Silva has like. He has the highest skill ceiling, in my opinion. You can be the most creative out of any other agent with Silva, in my opinion. There's just so many different angles you can use your utility to utilize, you know, just unexpected darts. You just get free wall hacks on these guys, and it's... I don't know. You can be very creative. That's why I like it the most. I feel like it yeah. brings out... I don't know. I, just, I enjoy playing it. I'm more passionate when I'm playing, playing something like Silva, but that's why I enjoy it so much. If anything, give you a lot of value in these clutches towards the end as well, because uh, not right. only we've been seeing you doing some great calls, but you've been popping off here in these clutch situations on on Sunset, which closed up the series. So uh, big, big congratulations, Sip. I think this is a huge win that's going to give a lot of momentum and a lot of confidence to the team. And I'm very much expecting the, uh, some great results coming out, some, uh, coming out from, sorry, from SAD for the rest of Stage 2, especially with such a dominant victory against MXS. Thank you, Vansilia. I appreciate it. All right, brother. Chat, that's it. We had Dip that we just had an interview with. It looks like I'm still, you know, struggling a little bit with the internet, but hopefully you guys could still bear it with me. But we're going to toss things to a break, and we have more Valor coming up here right after in Challenges. We have Core and TSM after the break. Don't go anywhere.